Well, they were first produced in 1917. They remain fashion icons and they've inspired quite a few songs. The Chucks in question are Chuck Taylor's, a brand of basketball shoe from Converse, a company now owned by Nike. They're now at the heart, though, of a legal battle between some of America's biggest corporations. Converse is suing more than 30 companies, including Skechers, Walmart, Fila and Ralph Lauren. Converse claims they are selling illegal imitations of its Chuck Taylor basketball shoes. The claim is for infringement of trademarks, covering the overall look of the shoe and also a diamond pattern on its sole. Annabelle Galberti is a lawyer specialising in the fashion industry. She told me that while copycats were a sign of a brand's success, designers had to be vigilant. The more copied they are, the more successful they are. Therefore, it's all very well to actually register your right and spend some money to register. In the US, you have, for example, to register even your copyright uh, or even to register your trademarks. Great. But then you need to enforce them, these intellectual property rights, as soon as they get infringed. If you don't, then you might be in a pickle. It might be difficult for a court to say that you're entitled to some damages. Yes, so... Nike is saying these 31 companies are infringing on trademarks that cover the look of the shoe and also the diamond pattern on the bottom of the shoe. How easy is Nike going to find it to make that case stick? Well, Nike has got a very useful case law that they can rely on, which is the um, Gucci versus Guess case, where the US court decided in 2012 that guess had infringed the trademark of uh, Gucci and in particular the diamond shape that um, Gucci owned as a trademark and also the interlaced GG logo that um, Gucci also has registered as a trademark so that US court ruled for Gucci confirming that um, guess had actually infringed the various trademarks. Okay so there's a precedent does that mean then that Nike would have a strong case? I think so. I think also that they can rely on other IP rights than just um, trademark. The trade dress, which is a US-specific IP right, which protects the look and um, form of a product if and only if the public associates the particular look with a particular brand. The um, bottle of Coca-Cola is a typical example of trade dress, which is quite difficult to prove in most instances. However, in this particular instance for Nike and Converse, the Converse shoe being so famous worldwide, I think that they have a really good probability of being able to demonstrate that um, trade dress exists in this case and that the public would associate the shoe with the, uh, the brand Converse. And lastly, there's also copyright. Copyright protects the artistic aspects of a particular product. The rule of thumb is to always advise fashion designers to register the copyright on their fashion products. So I'm fairly sure that here Nike and um, its beefy legal team have registered the copyright on the, um, on the Chuck Taylor. Annabel Galberti of the London law firm Crafovi bringing to an end this World Business Report.